welcome back to krishi learning platform in this video we are going to see about uh, the exemption scoring strategy of cost management accounting so we will be seeing out what to do and what not to do and also how i scored exemption in cost management accounting so those uh, tips or tricks that shall help you in the course uh, i will be sharing with you all so first of all moving on to the sources of material i use so for cost and management accounting we completely relied on the uh, institute study material so this was the first hope for me like uh, i say material was the first hope so it's like the bible or the quran or the bhagavad gita or something so like because uh, in this most of the question that come in the examination is from the ica material the simplest they will do is take two questions take two questions say there are two questions okay so in one question they will take the basic data and in the second question they will just take the adjustment part and they make the third question in the examination combining both these okay so this is what is happening uh, and in this basic data they will change the alternative names like uh for example if you can call something in two ways they will change that name for example i don't i don't get that example at this point is okay fine so for example uh, there is a growth rate in the question okay i'm not saying in particular to the costing subject i'm uh, saying in a general part and what they will give in the exam is the sustainable growth rate so while in the exam it will be finding it difficult whether you will get a confer, uh, like a confusion that whether the sustainable growth rate and the growth rate is same that this is what the maximum case they are giving okay so otherwise there is no much twist we are expecting in the question papers so we need to be clear that each and every examination question that arises have something with the icai base okay so just you need to think on that part so next is that i refer the cost and management accounting padika so padika book so here i didn't refer completely but what i did was those different questions like uh, some uh, hot question type was there where uh, some big big uh, numerical problems containing different point of view were given so that a uh, thing alone i categorize from the first reading like this has to be done before that examination like that uh, this has to be done in that 1.5 days and all so i just categorize them all and um, did that so yeah this is what i did so not all but i categorized so what how to categorize is that whenever you complete a chapter go to the padika book or some reference book that you are having go for the different types of question just read the question and see whether that is similar to the same material or if that is in the form of three this category if that is in the category of three also you can ignore that okay so and other than those coming under the category of one two and three you will have to select that and see whether you are able to do that one or no one so in that way you will know whether there are some new formulas hidden in that problem or some new uh, thought process that has to be dealt with there is some new process of accounting that can be uh, induced in your way of doing so that shall work okay so that is what is there and lastly i attempted one test series not test series actually one test series only one test i attended for the entire uh, cost and management accounting and that was a 100 mark test okay so uh, after completing most of the revision like i think after completing the first uh, revision i just went for this test and uh, i attempted the same and tried whether i was able to answer the question if something not known to me comes in the exam so that is what is there so i was able to attempt some 60 mark only so in that way i got an overview on what are my strengths and weaknesses and was able to improve during the examination okay so this is what 
and source the for material purpose and let's move on to the content part and here comes what i mainly did of studying and what i did not do so here mm, yeah we will start off with the module one so here uh, if we go for introduction to cost and management accounting i did not do completely but i just gave one one time reading okay i just gave one time reading so what i did was in that there will be a certain cases like i think in the last five to six pages of the chapter there will be the costing techniques involved and how to do and what to do and all like for example if there is an hospital we will do a service costing method if there is a construction we will do contract costing and if there is some batch product or smcg we will do a uh, joint product or uh, the batch pro batch costing and all okay so likewise they will give the classification like these are the industries which are the suitable methods of doing costing to that particular industry okay this question can be asked in the theory part of the examination where they will be asking you like uh, there is one brick making company what costing method shall i use there is one hospital what costing method shall i use there is one uh, theater what costing method can be used okay again all the industries will also be in this book itself either that will be in the uh, material of icia or it will be in the rtps or mcps or previous year question papers okay only that will come in the examination or the similar thing like if there is one concession like brick making they will again uh, give you next certain they will give steel making like that only they will change the differences so you can get hold on whatever it is there in the icia material itself that is what i would say and the next thing is the material cost so moving on with the material cost uh, yeah i did uh, material costing but i did not practice sums for uh, fifo lifo and weighted average okay so i did not do any sum for this but i was sure on the uh, eoq part cost material cost unit cost and all so that was something i practiced by hands and this one i know that like these are the things that is there but i do not practice okay so that is what difference between these two and again you can predict the questions okay so take the previous year paper whether if there is evoq question and again this year we won't be expecting evoq we may expect the cost question also okay otherwise uh, you can expect evoq itself so most of the compulsory question will have either the evoq or the cost question cost is nothing but this is my purchase cost this is the gst i have paid and for this i can avail the input credit or not so that problem will be there in the book no that is that i mentioned here as the cost problem okay so valuation of cost so whatever you you call in your uh, own words okay so the next thing is the employee cost employee cost was my last option so and there i only did the formula based questions okay so that has the and row and method and all that is what i did so other than that i didn't do anything in the employee cost part and then over it i was thorough in that except for the uh, waiter average uh, overhead costing so that will come for that fixed uh, fixed oh, sorry for the capital goods no? that, that that question alone i was not sure of and that concept alone i was not sure of other than that i was very thorough with the overhead part and abc is very very important chapter okay easily you can score 10 to 15 marks in this okay please don't ignore this chapter alone you can also ignore cost accounting system okay otherwise or cost sheet but in cost sheet if you decide to ignore then at least you need to have the basic outline of what the cost sheet is how the cost gets arrived or not because always in the question paper till now the most trickiest part is of the cost sheet okay so i never uh, saw or seen a question paper with a easiest cost sheet problem it's always a tricky part either they involve quantity with the cost or 
simply cost will be there but we will not have the hold on to do because it, it will be a complete different problem from the universe of ICO so that is what I felt like so I had the view of how cost sheet works and what are the things that will come in the cost sheet and why cost sheet and all I had the concept behind but I was like in the mind that I only wanted four marks out of the ten marks as per per cost sheet okay so that is what my mind trip was so I I think I would have scored four marks as well so because reason being I know the format I know the format I know how the, that will work and I know what consists and what to add and what not to okay so that is what it is and then moving on to the uh, cost accounting system I completely didn't do at all okay so this was my no way part I didn't do that and then moving on with the unit and batch costing I did everything here I did all job costing and contract costing everything process and operation costing everything joint products by products everything service costing all standard costing yes I did so for standard costing for employee cost there will be only one major problem and for uh, sorry material cost also there will be one only one problem and fix this is there is a problem formula and I have posted this sorry uh, fixed costing okay sorry uh, for fixed costing there will be a formula and there will be a tip and trick that has been shared by me earlier in my videos so you can just refer if you find fixed costing being difficult okay I, I would say one of the easiest concepts is the fixed costing okay so if you have doubt you can go check out that video and for marginal cost sorry there was a sound behind okay so for marginal costing uh, I did everything I was sure with all the formula and for marginal costing one tip I will show you is that so if you found like uh, if you find like uh, A plus B is equal to C then you should also remember another formula like A minus B is equal to B minus C or A is equal to C minus B like all the combination of one formula you should know and again if you know A is equal to X plus Y then you should know X plus Y is equal to C minus B also okay this is how the formula mindset of marginal costing should work okay so that is how they twist or trick in the examination for marginal costing and for budget and budgetary control I did not do that part but I had an idea as to like using the cost sheet I just attempted that in the question paper how to attempt that using uh, using the cost sheet is that you will have a certain formula okay that is how I make a budget okay cost sheet can be actual and also a forecast okay so for budget if somebody is asking you how uh, to put a sales budget and all you can simply bring the sales part of the particular cost sheet and say that this will be the expected sales and advert adver uh, sorry sales and advertisement ex expenses or the sales and distribution expenses at all and again i will be uh, adding this to the profit and all you can bring from the cost sheet itself okay that that is what the simplest trick i can give it to you for budget so you not spend time in budget so in the examination if it comes don't please simply put the budget okay whatever the budget it may be for budget there is no specific format that this budget has to be in this format only okay so you can do whatever uh, way but that has to be in a precise manner or in a tidy way okay so that is what the least is expect from us okay so this is what I did and here why I uh, left the conformed questions okay 
we already knew that budget will come for 10 mark and again cost accounting system this will come for 10 mark as always i say in my video that we are going for the 80 bar 20 strategy if we examination paper is for 100 mark leave the assured 20 mark and reach for the remaining okay so this will help you so examination anyhow will be coming out for 120 mark all the exam paper will be for 120 marks including the choice question okay so when that choice question is also there with you leave the 20 mark which is assured that it will come in the 2 to 6 question not that one compulsory question in that 2 to 6 question these two cost accounting system as well as this budget and budgetary control will consist of 10 and 10 okay now also my choice is not like one minute this is not working one minute. So again, my choice is not that if uh, one first question is a compulsory question, second question will have two parts, 10 mark, 10 mark, and third question will again have 10 mark, 10 mark, 4, 10 mark, 10 mark, 5, 10 mark, 10 mark, and 6 will have 5 mark, 5 mark, and 5 mark. Okay, so this is how it will be. My ideology is that here one budget question will come and here one cost accounting system question will come. So I will leave this and this. Okay. This is similar as not attending this completely also. Okay. Because anyhow I am getting that 10 mark. My target is that 20 mark. Anyhow I will be leaving that 20 mark. Okay. So again we will have a doubt like. Um, my target is to attain 80 marks. So anyhow, here also if we leave 20 marks, if I'm, uh, if luckily we are getting like cost accounting system here and budget system here as well, we will be able to attain 100 marks. So my possible mindset is that I will be attempting only between 80 marks to 100 marks and nowhere less, less than 80 marks. If time is not permitting for me, then that is, that will be a different task, okay? But my mindset should have that only i will be able to attain 80 mark to 100 mark okay so there is no disappointment if i couldn't attain the complete 100 mark or there is no disappointment if i uh, attempt only 80 marks also so this should be your mindset because in the examination we will be going like our parents will be saying that only if you ha you have to attend the entire marks and come only then you will be able to pass at least if you get the step mark because you will have an extra hedge on that but i would suggest that if you prepare even for 80 marks prepare 80 marks in that okay be sure of what you are going to attend for that 80 mark even in that 80 marks if you score and if you lose 20 marks to 25 marks also you will get 55 to 60 marks okay so which is more than enough to clear the clear that group okay so I just suggest that way this is what I will be following in my exams also. So this is the mentality that we should have and any other mentality that you can adopt to bring positivity shall also work uh, because uh, usually in the examination the first question will be the toughest question okay. As I always say in my video don't attempt from the first question always move from the sixth or fifth question okay because the toughness of the question paper will be from this way to this way all the question paper will be first question will be the tough second will be less tough third will be again less tougher than the second one and fifth will always be the easiest part okay so build confidence in the initial stages okay what IP is trying to do is that in the first question if you go and read if you find it like you can't go further so that time itself you will break your confidence okay then once your confidence is broken then further questions you will have the self-doubt or you have you will have the fear that the first question didn't come correctly whether this question will come correctly or not at all so 
that is what the psychological effect ICA will make while you see the question paper okay so this is what you need to know that like you should know that somebody will be going to fool you so I need to be aware of that okay that mindset has to be there so don't start with the first question and don't read in the examination also first question don't waste time in that but 15 minutes to read the 10 first question and make notes of because anyhow you will have to read that first question and you will have to do so in this 15 minutes you will just go for the second third four and five so to make like what would this six also to make a comfort zone as to as to what four question i'm going to attend and what one question i'm going to leave okay so that should be our ideal case in that 15 minutes and once you are done with that 15 minutes in the examination three hours you should not again go and say like uh in that 15 minutes i thought two will be okay for me and i left three and here i should not think that okay let me try three if not three comes we will go for two okay once you made up that decision you should go with that itself okay so that sh that strong build that you have to build this should be done within this 15 minutes itself okay don't uh, take that to the next three hours or so so use this 15 minutes really seriously and figure it out what i will attend and what i will not attend okay so don't waste your time in the first question i hope uh i'm clear with this and yeah uh in case this is what i did to uh, score exemption in the examination and another thing that i always say in the video is that only if you are able to revise something in that 1.5 days read that if not don't do that okay so if you are sure that you will be able to finish all the uh thing in the 1.5 days you can do that okay but this one point in this 1.5 days if you're not able to do some thing then don't do it either before also because don't waste your time here like you will be spending your three days four days here after one week you will only have the outline of what is there okay and you will not know how tricky like one major extra point if they give i'm not sure what i will do and mess up with the entire thing means then it's better to not do it itself okay so that is what i would suggest for and uh, i think i had uh, covered most of the points in case if i have missed to cover anything please do comment in the box so that uh, i will just share those extra input in the comment itself okay so thank you so much for patiently watching this entire video